This is a presentation about how to fly a roll data eyeless, tips and tricks. So for the introduction, this presentation is for any aircraft type with an instantaneous vertical speed. Roll data eyeless, what is it? It's a uh, manually flown eyeless, so no autopilot, autotrust or a flight director. Why would you do that? Because some failures will disable the autopilot, autotrust and flight director. Also, to prepare for an LPC or OPC simulator session, it is a fun challenge is if it is allowed by your company, and it's good to maintain your handling skills. Flying a roll data ILS is not easy, even for experienced crew. It requires a lot of uh, regular practice. Using a structured method to fly the roll data ILS it does help a lot. So how to practice? You can do this uh, in a level D simulator. The problem with that is that it's usually time limited and you can only do that twice a year. You can also practice it, of course, in the real aircraft, but some companies do not allow that. You can also use a PC simulator, but this requires a quality software and hardware. Like this. So what kind of uh, PC software do you need? So for a PC flight simulator, you will need to find a suitable flight sim which supports the aircraft you, uh, you fly. And it needs to be able to uh, set uh, realistic turbulence and if you can also thermals will help some. Op optionally, uh, high density overcast uh, cloud layer or uh, some fog would uh, be uh, handy. And also op optionally, an up-to-date NAV database will help some. So for the airplane add-on, you want to use a study level airplane add-on, so high quality. It needs to have a realistic uh, performance, so pitch, power, settings and descent rate. It needs to be realistic in aircraft handling, such as the pitch rate, roll rate, and if there's any uh, fly-by-wire, it needs to behave realistically. Your company engine type must be supported and it needs to have a high resolution EVs uh, display if your aircraft uses EVs and uh, preferably with a 2D pop-up function so the display will be a little bit easier to read. Also important, it needs to have a uh, panel or FMS state save feature. This will help a lot saving time because if you have to set up the situation uh, every time you want to do a roll that ILS it becomes uh, very time consuming. So what kind of PC hardware do you need? You will need a high resolution joystick preferably with a hole sensor which is a, a magnetic sensor because uh, if the resolution is too low and most cheap joysticks and uh, truss levers they, uh, they have a low resolution sensor uh, this will not be good enough to fly uh, precision ILS. Um, for the thrust lever, you will need uh, two thrust uh, levers uh, if your engine has uh, your airplane has two engines, of course. And you will need a reasonably high-end uh, PC. Uh, if you want to use VR, then you will need a, a top-of-the-line uh, PC. If you use a laptop, you want to use a relatively uh, large screen, so you'll be able to read the instruments. Using VR is uh, optional. Uh, if you do want to use uh, VR, you need a very high resolution uh, head mounted display. Um, it does not provide any added benefit flying a, uh, for flying a roll data ILS though. Uh, if you don't use VR, uh, the frames per second y you want to get is uh, at least 30 FPS. Um, if you want, you can turn down the visual fidelity except for the instrument quality, so the texture resolution you want to keep high. If you want to fly single engine raw data ILS, then you will need rudder pedals and also a rudder trim switch. Uh, there's no need for the same shape of the controls. Um, it's unlikely that you can find the exact same uh, joystick and thrust lever for the aircraft type you fly, but if, if you do, it's good. If, if not, that's not a problem. So there's airplane and company specifics. Uh, make sure that the aircraft you have in the PC flight simulator has the correct uh, power setting. Um, there's 
sometimes there's an, uh, aircraft have different uh, engine types, so uh, they can use either N1 or EPR or Torque if it's a uh, turboprop or, uh, or RPM. And you want to find a, a power setting for a 3 degree glide slope uh, or whatever glide slope uh, you want to fly. Uh, for the A320, for example, the N1 you want to set is about the gross weight minus 8. So if your gross, gross weight is 60 tons, then the reference N1 setting, once you're on the glide slope, is about 52%. And for a single engine, uh, at 10%. But again, that, that is for the A320. So you want to find a setting which works well for your aircraft. You want to also find a suitable maximum power setting. Uh, that is because if you set uh, too much power, the uh, air, the uh, speed will usually uh, overshoot, which you don't want. Uh, for the A320, a good number is maximum 60% N1 or uh, no more than 65% if the speed is really low. Uh, you want to uh, observe the auto thrust when the uh, autopilot and auto thrust is on in the real aircraft to get some uh, good uh, reference numbers for the power setting. Uh, some companies require minimum thrust settings uh, due to the spool time of the of, of a jet engine. You also want to take note of your company tolerances for speed and glide slope and low glider. So how to uh, set up the PC simulator? You want to uh, pick uh, an airport and a runway, uh, place the air the, the airplane at a, a certain altitude, at a certain position and heading uh, so that you uh, can do a good uh, glide slope and localizer intercept uh, then you want to set some uh, wind and turbulence and thermals if you can to make it a little bit harder that definitely helps with your instrument scan and also set some cloud and fog then for the airplane uh, you want to set up the uh, panel state and the fms setup such as the ILS minima etc and you also want to intercept the localizer from an angle uh, that makes it a bit harder and it's good for practice Initially, uh, turn on the autopilot, auto trust, and flight director because usually, once you load a situation, the aircraft need to settle down a bit and, uh, and stabilize. And then you want to save the situation and the panel state and the FMS state. How to intercept the localizer? So first, you want to load the situation you first saved and load the panel state. Then let the aircraft stabilize while whilst the autopilot and auto thrust is on. And ev when everything is stabilized, then you can turn off the autopilot, auto thrust, and flight director. Watch the localizer indication like a hawk to prevent an overshoot. It's helpful if the pilot monitoring calls localizer alive and glide slope alive. Once the localizer is alive, you want to observe the closure rate of the localizer to determine the bank angle required. A tight intercept will require turning before the localizer is live. For example, if you do a 90 degree intercept at about 10 miles, you want to turn when the VOR needle is about 5 degrees offset from the runway track. You can see this on the nav display. You want to turn with maximum 25 or 30 degrees bank. And always look at your bank angle to prevent banking too much. That is very easy to do if you don't look at the bank angle. Then once you're turning uh, final, you can tell the pilot monitoring set runway track. You can do that before also. And it's also uh, good to intercept the localizer uh, before you intercept the glide slope. Because if you do the localizer and glide slope intercept at the same time, it does reduce the workload quite a bit. If a track indication is available on your aircraft, please use it. That makes your life a lot easier. So intercepting the glide slope. It's best to be fully configured before you intercept the glide slope because if you add flaps on the approach, the aircraft will balloon and you need to anticipate that, increasing the workload. If you do select uh, flaps on the approach, then anticipate the balloon so you don't end up above the glide slope. There's no need to fly a level segment, uh, but you need to stay below the glide slope uh, before uh, flap selection. Aim to intercept the glide slope at about 3,000 feet above aerodrome elevation, if able. If flying uh, level at 3,000 feet above aerodrome elevation, start the descent about uh, a quarter dot below the glide slope. If you wait until you are on the glide slope and then descend, you will overshoot a little bit. 
then set the appropriate power when intercepting the glide slope. So if your uh, speed is high, you want to set uh, thrust idle in that case. And don't forget to set the go around altitude once you're on the glide slope because there's no trigger for that. So how to uh, scan the instruments when you're on the low glide and glide slope? Uh, use either a vertical speed or pitch as a reference, whatever works for you. Some people find it easier to set, to fly uh, looking at the pitch indication, others find it easier, like me, I find it easier to only look at the vertical speed to determine the pitch. Uh, your primary scan should be the vertical speed or pitch, and then the glide slope and also your bank angle. These things you want to watch out for the most. And that's your secondary scan, uh, scanning this a little bit less, the localizer, the track and heading, and the speed and power. If your airplane uses uh, EPR as the main thrust setting, you, uh, you actually want to use the uh, N1 indication instead, because it's just a lot easier to use. What's the vertical speed the most? Because any small change make, makes a big difference in the glide slope deflection. If the wings are level and the track is correct, the localizer drift uh, will be minimal. Uh, that's why you can scan the, the localizer a little bit less, but make sure that your wings are level. If your your airplane has a flight path vector, uh, you can use it if you want. Uh, some people find it handy, others not, it's up to you. Um, you can use either the pitch uh, section of it or uh, and or the track of it. If you, you do have a, a track indication, uh, please use it. <laughs> it makes your life a lot easier. And uh, you can use either the flight path vector if you have it or the uh, heading bar track indication. So here's a picture of the primary scan. You should be, uh, what you should be looking at. So the, the vertical speed, then the uh, glide slope diamond and also keeping your wings level. Uh, but the vertical speed and the glide slope, this one you should uh, watch like a hawk. Uh, pay very, very close attention to it. Uh, because a small change in the vertical speed make, uh, makes a change in the glide slope deflection pretty quickly. And uh, as long as the wings remain level, if you're on the localizer, it will not drift much. For the secondary scan, you want to uh, scan your uh, speed, and of course that relates to the power setting. So here, uh, here's an engine using EPR, but instead of EPR, look at the N1 because it's more accurate. And also look at the localizer and then your track. If you would draw a heat map, uh, if, the, if there would be eye tracking, and you would see where your eyes would be looking uh, the most, it will look something like this. So you'll be looking mostly at your uh, vertical speed and the glide slope and the wings level and the speed and the thrust setting and then the heading and the localizer. So how to track the localizer? Uh, you want to never turn without looking at the bank angle. Otherwise you could uh, bank too much. Uh, if you are off track, what you want to do, uh, do is uh, turn towards the, the localizer, uh, then wings level, wait until you're on the localizer, back when, and when, when you're back on track, turn uh, back the other way, and then wings level again. Most localizer drift comes from not keeping the wings level. That's why it's important to look at that. The localizer course indication is uh, sometimes slightly off. This will happen if the database for the course bar does not correspond exactly with the real course. Uh, this is not too uncommon. It, it, it does happen uh, every once in a while. So what will happen in that case that is, let's say you're on the localizer and you put the track exactly at the course bar. In theory, you should stay on the localizer provided that the uh, engine thrust is the same on both engines and you keep the wings level. However, if you do uh, find the aircraft starts drifting off the localizer, that will mean that the uh, course bar value from the database or whatever you said before is not exactly correct. So if you can change that in your aircraft, uh, then, then um, please do. Uh, if, if the aircraft uh, uh, is not able to change that in the database or not manually anyway, what you can do is set the heading bug uh, instead as a reminder 
to offset the track slightly. So you want to modify the track and the, uh, the track you fly and then uh, set the heading on track buck to compensate. So how to track the glide slope. So important to fly the vertical speed as mentioned before you want to fly half the ground speed. So if the ground speed is 140 knots then you want to fly 700 feet a minute when you are on the glide slope. Now when you are done uh, high or above the glide slope then you want to fly 1000 feet a minute uh, down until you're back on the glide slope and then half the ground speed again. When you are low, below the glide slope, you want to fly 500 feet a minute down until you're back on the glide slope and then fly half the ground speed again. You need to be quite assertive to set the vertical speed you need but don't over control. The pitch input should control the uh, vertical path or the glide slope, uh, not the power. And the power should control the speed. For fly-by-wire aircraft, uh, make small momentary control inputs. And for non-fly-by-wire aircraft, make sure you trim the aircraft correctly. Speed and power. Setting pitch and power for a certain speed. Now this is done in uh, smaller aircraft. You probably have uh, learned that at flight school. But this is for um, light airplanes only and or if you have unreliable airspeed. Uh, this technique uh, does not work well with heavier airplanes. So uh, modify the vertical speed or the pitch for glide slope uh, tracking and then modify the power to control the speed. The power and speed requires less scanning because it changes quite slowly. But because of that, it's also easy to forget to look at it. So do pay attention. You want to set the same power on all the engines uh, to prevent uh, drift with wings level. Like I mentioned before, as, lo as long as your wings are level if you're on the localizer and the track is set correctly, then you should stay on the localizer. However, if the, the engine power on both engines is not quite the same, it will start to drift anyway. So you want to make sure that uh, the power on all the engines is set uh, as close uh, together as, as possible. You want to make small changes in power. Uh, set, so, set the power you, you think you need, then you wait, observe the result, and then set it again if needed. If the speed is low, then don't add excessive power, otherwise the speed will overshoot. Pitch power couple. For, for a fly-by-wire aircraft, you still get a bit of pitch power couple with large thrust changes, so you do need to uh, anticipate that a little bit. For non-fly-by-wire aircraft, the pitch power couple is significant, so anticipate the required pitch change. Uh, when the power changes, then you want to set the trim also. And never move the thrust lever without looking at the power gauges. Uh, it could be um, tempting, especially as to if the workload is, is high, to, to just kind of sort of guess the amount of thrust change uh, you need without looking at the gauges. But uh, this uh, makes it actually quite harder to fly because uh, it, it's much more uh, likely that you set the wrong power setting. So speed and power. If at idle thrust, uh, set the power in time due to the spool of time required of jet engines. Only set idle thrust if a large speed reduction is required. Setting thrust uh, requires a focus to make sure that the thrust is the same on both engines and the thrust is set accurately. Uh, but uh, this uh, could result in not scanning the instruments, the other instruments uh, enough, so do pay attention for that also. If you have a ground speed mini in an Airbus, this is a feature that if there's a lot of headwind, the, the speed bug will increase automatically. Uh, this it does increase the workload um, and uh, more speed and thrust scanning will be required. You want to anticipate any required power change. If you are above the glide slope, uh, pitch down and reduce the power, uh, unless the speed is already low. And if you are below the glide slope, you want to pitch up and increase the power, unless the speed is already high. If EPR is the main power gauge, uh, it's easier to use N1 instead. And you want to find a reference power setting before you start the approach. So have a look at your uh, weight and then calculate how, what your reference power setting will be. What to do when you are close to the runway? 
uh, when you're breaking out of cloud, uh, resist the temptation to turn towards the runway if you have any crosswind, because that will make the aircraft drift off the localizer. Uh, when you are visual, keep scanning the instruments, especially the vertical speed. As, uh, especially when the uh, weather is very foggy, then um, it's, it's very easy to start deviating, especially from the, the glide slope, if you don't scan the instruments enough. The glide slope and localizer diamonds are more sensitive the closer you are to the one way. Um, but you want to uh, not react with more control input, instead react faster with the same input, otherwise you will get excessive deviations. If pitch oscillations happen, set the fixed vertical speed, don't change it, observe it and then modify it. Any other notes? You want to make smooth control inputs for passenger comfort. And if you are tired or rusty, then you probably have a slow and unstructured scan and you could also have tunnel vision issues and that is the reason you do need to practice this. And when you practice, uh, don't look outside uh, until the minima, unless the deviation is too much. Only practice for real with good visibility and stable air, if it is allowed by your company. When you are struggling, uh, use the outer thrust on initially and wait until you are established on the glide slope and localizer. Uh, keep practicing and use uh, later use outer thrust off. And then uh, later on when you are better at it, you can intercept the localizer from the side when your skills improve. If flying manual during the descent, don't forget to do descent energy management and it is a little bit different than you would do using the autopilot. There is no need for uh, raw data instruments on the nav display. Some people like to set uh, the raw data mode on the nav display, uh, but that's not what you will be looking. Well, you, you could do. If that works for you, that's fine, but it's not really a requirement because all the raw data you need is already in front of you on the primary flight display. You want to take into account any airplane specific issues. For example, with the A320, if you do a raw data ILS, you will need to turn both flight directors off. It might be, you might think that, oh, okay, I'll let uh, the flight directors on for pilot monitoring. But if you do that, what will happen, the heading and uh, track uh, will time out. So if the approach is armed, it will cause uh, glide stop star and log star on the pilot monitoring side, um, causing uh, the loss of the uh, blue track line because it will uh, time out. If the approach is not armed, uh, then you will get FPA on the FMA and that's not really useful either. So you need to turn both flight directors off for the A320 and probably for all Airbus aircraft. And once you do get good at flying a raw data ILS, don't get cocky thinking, oh, I can do this. I don't need to scan so much because that's how it goes wrong. You, you still need to scan the instruments a lot and pay a lot of attention. Okay, so now I'll show a um, video of a real raw data ILS approach and I will comment on it. And also I flew a uh, raw data ILS on a simulator on the PC and I will give some comments on that. Okay, this is a real raw data ILS flown in a uh, 320. I've set the uh, flight control display here so you can see what the flight control inputs are. So now I'm doing a, a localizer intercept from the side. Uh, flap 2 has just been selected, uh, passing uh, 3,500 feet. In this case, I don't fly a level segment. Uh, on this approach, I actually did not be, uh, I was not fully configured before uh, intercepting the glide slope, uh, making it myself a little bit uh, harder. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done that, but it still worked out quite okay. So here comes the localizer. So I want to um, slowly start turning. It's a, it's a small uh, intercept here, it's not, not too many degrees, so it moves quite slowly. So that makes it a bit easier. So there we go. Uh, we're almost on the on the uh, glide slope here and once on the glide slope don't forget to set the go around altitude the speed was a bit high uh, before um, because we're slowing down so uh, the thrust uh, is at idle but don't forget to set the thrust in time you want to set the thrust when the trend arrow in, a, in an airbus you get a trend arrow on the speed uh, if the trend arrow hits the speed target that's when you want to start adding thrust 
Okay, so we're on the glide slope and now we want to uh, increase the vertical speed to half the ground speed. So it'll be about 700 feet a minute with this ground speed. And it's very uh, important to look at that carefully. Okay, so there we selected gear down, uh, still flap 2 selected. So now when, when we select flap 3 and then flap full, it does balloon. So we need to increase the uh, pitch a bit to counteract for that. Okay, the speed is still uh, slowing down. Uh, you can see it's a, it's a little bit turbulent. So that makes it a bit harder to set the truss. Okay, here I set the truss now and uh, continuing the glide slope. So I make sure that the wings are level and if we're on the localizer and provided that the track diamond is on the course bar, um, it, it should stay more or less on the localizer. Now you can choose to either uh, look uh, here uh, for uh, the track uh, or look here for the track. It's up to you. Uh, personally, I find it easier to use the flight path vector to align it with the track line once the aircraft is on the localizer. But if you find it easier to look at the heading bar and set it, that's fine too. Uh, I, uh, personally, I do not use the uh, flight path vector for uh, setting a certain pitch. Uh, if that works for you, that's fine. Uh, personally, I just find it easier to set the uh, vertical speed instead. Okay, so there the flaps were just selected. You could see it was ballooning a bit and now I'm pitching down again to get it back on the glide slope. Now you see now it is that the uh, ground speed mini increases the speed bug and did uh, like as I mentioned before does increase the uh, workload so I need to uh, set some more power and the speed bug keeps changing and that's kind of annoying but that's just the way the Airbus works. Quite a lot of headwind as you can see here. Okay continuing the flight making sure that we fly 700 feet a minute down and if, it, uh, if you fly through a thermal um, you need to immediately uh, pitch down to keep the vertical speed the same. For example, now it's 500 feet a minute. That's uh, okay. We're slightly below the glide slope. Maybe that's okay. Okay. So once we're on the glide slope again, increase again to half the ground speed. Maybe it's 600 feet a minute at the moment. Six or seven feet a minute. And um, okay. So keep flying, uh, making sure the wings are level. So we're looking here vertical speed a bit too much. So reduce it. There, 700 feet a minute again, or 600 feet a minute. It's actually 650 with that speed, but you can't really see that's a bit hard. Um, look at the glide slope, very important. Mostly look at the um, uh, vertical speed and the glide slope and keeping wings level. Don't forget to do the landing checklist because you'll be very focused and be fully configured. Uh, keep checking the speed also and looking at the thrust. Uh, this airplane uses uh, EPR. I don't like to use that because it's a very small changes which is uh, not really hel uh, helpful. So instead, I just look at these numbers. So uh, I said that this engine number, the same as uh, this, this and one number, the same as, uh, as here. Make sure that they're both uh, aligned. Keep flying. So we're approaching minima now. Uh, personally, I keep looking inside, not cheating. I'm not looking outside. Uh, approaching minima, oh, it's just past minima already, actually. Here. Uh, so uh, once you're at the minima, you do need to look outside. But don't look only outside. It becomes, uh, it, it gets, uh, it's very easy to uh, deviate too much from the instruments if you do that. So keep scanning the instrument, mostly vertical speed. Just look outside, vertical speed, vertical speed, vertical speed. The localizer, there's no need to check that because you can see that outside very easily. Okay, so now we're almost landing already. So that was um, a real uh, raw data ILS, and now I'll show a uh, raw data ILS on a uh, PC flight simulator. Okay, so now we're in the simulator. You can see that I've, um, at the uh, PFD is popped out and also the uh, engine display here uh, that makes it a lot easier to uh, fly the ILS accurately because the display is easier to read. Right, so at the moment um, the autopilot is still engaged to uh, let the aircraft stabilize a bit and uh, so now we turn off the uh, autopilot off, flight director off, auto thrust off and uh, bird on. Uh, I set the uh, runway track now because uh, this is a single pilot operation. Of course, you wouldn't do that for real. But um, uh, when you practice on your own, that's unfortunately the way it usually is, unless you find a friend who can help you. But um, so I set the runway track now, so I don't have to do that at the last moment. Uh, I adjust the uh, track a bit because it's a bit of a sharp intercept. I, I don't get any radar vectors, obviously, because this is just me. But I want to do a... Um, a, lo a proper localizer intercept, so you don't want to overshoot too much. Okay, so at the moment flying level at uh, 3,000 feet, you don't have to fly level if you are still descending, that's fine. But make sure you stay below the glide slope, because if you add flaps, it will balloon. 
Okay, so localizer is alive, and um, so we set the bank angle. Keep looking at your bank angle. Don't just look here. Look at your bank angle. Make sure you don't overshoot, and see how far fast you are approaching the uh, uh, the track required here. So I, I was turning a little bit too much. So I'm in wings level to let the uh, localizer creep in a little bit more, and uh, at the same time keep scanning the glide slop. So you see here, glide slop is live. So now I do want to be fully configured before I start the approach. And so just select the lap two and uh, make sure I keep tracking the localizer. So I'm almost on the localizer, then I turn to the correct track. And once I'm on the localizer, a little bit too far, so I turn a little bit back and uh, make sure that I keep flying at the correct altitude. Here comes the glide slope, almost gonna intercept that. And uh, now I'm on the localizer, so time to uh, turn towards the correct track. And um, so I'll be ready. Um, to uh, intercept the glide slope and not be too far off the localizer, thereby reducing the workload. Okay, so uh, we've fully configured already, uh, flap full gear down and uh, ready to intercept the glide slope. So uh, you want to start the descent about one quarter uh, of a dot of the glide slope. So there we are, uh, pitch down slowly and uh, slowly creep towards the glide slope. You can see I set some turbulence here and there are also some thermals to make it a bit harder because if you set no turbulence, it's very unrealistic. Almost every flight there is at least some turbulence. It's very, very rare that, there's, uh, that the air is completely clear and there's no turbulence. And in that case, if you do that, it will be very easy to, well, not very easy, but it will be a lot easier to fly roll data ILS with no turbulence at all. Because once the uh, once you're on the glide slope, a localizer, just don't change the side stick too much, set the correct thrust, and it will stay there pretty much. And that is just not realistic. You do want to set a bunch of turbulence. Okay, um, so now uh, we continue to fly uh, on the glide slope, on the localizer, and fully configured, everything going well. So again, so the scan, um, we're looking at the, uh, the ground speed, it's a bit small here, but it's 142 knots at the moment, so you want to fly 700 feet a minute down. And so there's a bit of a turmoil here, so it pitches up to 600 feet a minute, so I'm already slightly above the glide slope. You want to be very, very accurate. So pitch down a bit, so a little bit more, 800 feet a minute down until you are back on the glide slope. Meanwhile, we are checking, of course, the localizer. So uh, I'm almost on the localizer now. So once you're on the localizer, set the, the track uh, on the, uh, the track line and don't forget that if the database is not correct, you want to offset that a little bit, so modify it the track if needed. Okay, the speed is a little bit high now, so reduce the trust and um, you want to make sure that these numbers uh, of the both engines are the same, otherwise it will start drifting on the localizer even though the um, wings are, are level. So I just had to, uh, was just um, setting the cabin ready here. Um, okay, so continuing the flight, I'm slightly to the right of the localizer, so I will need to turn a little bit to the left to get uh, back on it. Meanwhile, still scanning the instruments there. So we're looking at the vertical speed, 900 feet a minute, too much. So I need to pitch up, there we go, and set 700 feet a minute again. You, you need to really watch it like a hawk, watch it a lot, because a small change in the vertical speed will make a big change in the uh, glide slope, uh, especially when you're closer to the runway. The localizer is a bit less critical, but as, as long as you keep the wings level and uh, you are on the track, the, you should stay on the uh, localizer, provided that the, the thrust setting on both engines is almost the same. Okay, so slightly above the glide slope, increasing the vertical speed a little bit, 800 feet a minute to get back on the glide slope, and um, continuing the flight. So the speed is a little bit high. Now, personally, I'm not too... Um, Picky with the speed, if it's five knots high, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, I'll just leave it because it increases the workload a lot if you keep tweaking the thrust too much. But you do want to be very picky with the um, with the glide slope. You need to be exactly on the glide slope and keep adjusting the vertical speed like this. So I'm a little bit high, increase the vertical speed, and then back to the, uh, the ground, half the ground speed, which is 700 feet a minute. And make sure that the wings are level. So we're looking at the vertical speed, glide slope, then wings level, vertical speed, glide slope, wings level, then check that you're still on the localizer, if not modify, check the speed, and not good, modify, leg. so you always want to check the thrust setting if you want to modify the speed, never just look at the thrust, uh, I mean, never look at the speed only and then just kind of guess a thrust setting that usually does not work well. Okay, continuing the flight, 
so slightly off the localizer. Uh, actually, in uh, there's a surprising amount of uh, uh, deviation if you are only slightly off the localizer. If you look outside, you if you're close to the runway, you're usually quite a bit uh, to the left or right of the uh, runway. It's kind of funny how that works, but that's the reality. So now we're getting a little bit more above the glide top. That's very common as you get closer. So uh, we already passed the minima actually. So um, once you're in the, the minima, you will in the real aircraft, you will hear that. I just switch the sound off to be um, not uh, distracting. But um, what I personally do in um, on a PC simulator at the minima, I just uh, stop the flight because uh, landing a um, PC flight simulator is actually a lot harder than uh, and, um, to do it properly in, in the real aircraft uh, once you get good at it. Uh, maybe it's easier to land a PC flight simulator if you're inexperienced, but um, once you get good at flying the real aircraft, uh, flying, uh, doing a landing in the real aircraft is a lot easier than landing a, a flight simulator. Um, because just the picture just lo looks different and it, it, I think in general it's not a good idea for training to, to try to uh, land the aircraft on, 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 a, on a PC. Even in a level D simulator it's not quite the same as in reality, a lot better than a PC simulator but still. But anyway I'll continue the flight. I, um, I closed trust a bit uh, too early because I forgot to put my headphones on so I couldn't hear the uh, red out call out but you can see okay it's a bit, uh, flare a bit too late but anyway I did a landing and I also forgot to set the camera correctly so it was a bit of a crappy landing, but anyway, it worked. So I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below.